Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwald, director of the MBA program at Rockford University. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford University was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. Thank you so much for being here. Please turn off your cell phones. Um, I'm going to introduce Matthew Simpson today. And Matthew is a native uh, of Rockford and a graduate of Auburn High School and Rock Valley College, um, where he, graduate, he graduated cum laude from um, SIU Carbondale in 2010 with a Bachelor of Science in Business Economics and Finance. He spent two years as the Business Development Special Specialist at the Rockford Area Economic Development Co Council, engaging in business retention and expansion efforts. While pursuing his Master's of Public Administration, Matthew worked as planning intern with the Village of Glen Ellen, Illinois Planning and Development Department. After completing his MPA, Matthew worked as Community Development Manager with the Rockford Housing Authority. He is now Community Impact Manager with the United Way of Rock River Valley and 2014 People You Should Know. Please help me welcome <laughs> Matthew Simpson. My name is Matthew Simpson, you call me Matt. Um, a little bit more background information uh, related to what we're talking about today, community. Um, I'm from Rockford, I was born and raised, I wasn't born here, but I was raised up on the southeast side of town. Um, and I learned a lot about myself through participating in a very tight knit network of people. It was a very close community. And uh, it helped shape who I am as a person. I took those experiences with me to, uh, to college. And my first professional experience working in economic development. Um, I went back to school and got a graduate degree and transitioned to similar work doing community development. It's close, but it's a lot different still. Economic development, you're working with employers to try to create jobs. Community development, you work with people to try to respond to local challenges. And, um, just as I continue to learn more about the profession, even taking things away from economic development, I've just found that there are some special things about community that you know, if you have a better understanding of it, you can have a deeper impact. So uh, I think about community in a, in a certain way. I titled the presentation, What is Community For? I think about how people use community to move their lives. And what is the function of community? Subtitle is understanding what communities do for us, and how we can help them work better. Um, I just believe that you know, the human and social aspects of communities are a resource that are underutilized and untapped sometimes. And if we have that understanding, it can be a tool. And it won't be in the way. Our community and our culture won't be in the way. So. So we'll start with the definition. Uh, this is a business dictionary's definition of community. This isn't a, a sociological definition. It's a lot more layered and complex than in sociology. But business looks at it as a, a self-organized network of people with a common agenda, cause, or interest to collaborate by sharing ideas, information, and other resources. Um, so this is kind of like high level. It's a nice, neat uh, idea of what community is. But there are some things that we should be kept in mind when we think about how we see community in our lives. First is, and that was a neat definition, but it never is that simple. It never is that clean and neat. I think about community as like uh, words like a hill or a snowflake or something like that. It comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes, um, and no two are necessarily alike. So that's what I keep in mind. It may or may not have boundaries. So sometimes a community is a physical location, you know, with the streets and uh, you know, a map that, that denotes where you are. <coughs> but a lot of times it's more so about an idea that people share with each other and the interest that people decide to put <coughs> together. Um, and the work we do, the work I do, 
I kind of work in both senses. You know, I, I try to keep keep tabs on a, a geographic area, but a lot of times that thing is fuzzy, and it's a lot more important to understand how people think about the neighborhood and use that to drive their development activity. And a big part of our community is it transcends the individual members. So um, community is a, a social construct. It's an ideal. And that means that it's cultural. And the things about community are not translated through a person's genes, but it's more so ideas and symbols that people res that resonate with people that they use to make decisions. So um, it's a lot bigger than individuals kind of um, carrying a community forward. It's more so about the community lives and people participate in the community. The community's going to be here after we're gone. But the way we plug in kind of helps drive where our community goes. So it's, it's important to see the individuals, but those individuals participate in a much larger thing, a social construct, which is the community. So, so um, working in economic development, working in community development, I've just found that these three things are how community functions for people. I see um, reflection, connection, and protection. And uh, that is, you know, all those symbols, all those cultural aspects, they translate into these things for people. And we'll, we'll dig into that. First piece being reflection. Um, think about an outlet, you know. And um, this, is, this is an outlet here, but in the words of uh, Dave Chappelle, this is the type of outlet. You know. We like to shop, but we're looking at a different outlet. We're looking at this type of outlet. Something that you plug into to get more energy. You can see the cell phone picture is a perfect example. Um, it's more about identity. <coughs> so you see yourself in the community, and you decide to plug in. Um, it's very important that people have that opportunity to find who they are in the community and decide to participate. So in saying that, it's a lot easier for some people to participate in multiple. It's very, you know, we belong to, uh, some of us have attained higher education. That's a community that we belong to. Some of us live in certain areas of town. That's a community we belong to. You know, and some of us really identify with the city. That's another community. Um, so you can participate in a lot of different communities. And, and what's important is that when you do plug into one, you have to understand that um, you hold on to some uniqueness as part of that community as well. So it's not necessarily going to be homogenous. You have to understand this fluidity, fluidity in that community. Um, just some examples. <coughs> Unique, very nuanced, very particular uh, community that exists all across America. Colored Pencil Society of America is a real thing. Um, it's existed for 25 years now. And um, it's just a, a set of people who really have an affinity for using this tool to make art. They have chapters across the country. They have national conferences dedicated to their shared value, their shared idea. And that's what the community is for them. But that's not geographic. But here you see a map of the boroughs of New York City. These are also communities. And they have hard boundaries. Um, and like I said, it is possible for communities to exist outside of each other. So when you think about how many you see this here in Six Queens, I, just from my learning, I know that a certain area of Queens on the south side, they call it Jamaica Queens. Because a lot of the people there are from the island of Jamaica. That's a community. But when you look at the entire borough, which is a larger community. People probably identify the Queens as their borough, as their stomping grounds. But then there's a lot of pride for the entire city of New York City as well. So that's just kind of like the key <coughs> piece. People can see themselves in a lot of different ways in their community. And that's the reflection, the identity. That's how it kind of functions for people. Um, the second piece is the connection. And you see a picture of the bridge here. It's really 
uh, kind of like an on and off ramp for people when they decide to plug into a community. It's, um, you know, your participation oftentimes gives you access to resources and information. Uh, you know people, they can help you by connecting you with opportunities. Um, and those opportunities oftentimes are related to that specific group, but they're very valuable to you. So in your participating, you get that benefit, that connection. Um, now it's also, when we look at it internally, but the community is also the way that we interact with the larger society. Because I, I mentioned that community inside of the community. I identify here but everything we do kind of resonates outward. So my participation in you know, Rockford, the decisions that we make here, are impacting our region. And it's important to understand your connectedness as a part of a community. Um, but for some people, it's also a disconnect because those communities don't have the same opportunities to, to uh, share the resources and information. And it becomes more insular. Which is dangerous. We'll, we'll kind of get into that later. Um, just a great example of being connected to a community and how people use it is the uh, immigrant community. Now, the what they say is over for business. Our immigrants are driving small business creation in the United States. Um, this was an article written about the success that immigrant communities have, um, almost like you know, creating independent incubation networks, uh, kind of like revolving loan funds, uh, you know, human resources, uh, things like that, outside of traditional uh, networks of support. And that's because they're connected to a community. They don't need to necessarily you know, access the larger resources that are available, but they don't need to, because as a result, you know, they, they develop these uh, opportunities internally. And that's very valuable for people if you have the option to connect at that level. Um, so the last piece, which is also very important, is protection. And it's related to the first piece, that identity. When you feel like you belong somewhere, you feel safe. You feel like it's in your space. And you can be who you are. And that's a feeling of protection. It's not necessarily physical protection, it's just being safe from judgment, being safe from ridicule, and that's very important. And that's how community functions for us. Um, so, you know, back to those shared values and shared ideas, I just found a pretty interesting picture online. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Turkey Testicle Festival. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a picture of a woman who's very comfortable enjoying her meal in her space with people who share the same idea. You know, it's an entire community that appreciates this food item. <laughs> Turkey testing. And I just love to see, you know, she's clearly enjoying herself and that's fine. And that's beautiful. That's the function of community. She's safe in that space, in that community, enjoying uh, the food. Um, so another side of protection is is physical safety and protection. Um, this is a picture actually from Paris of activists and protesters holding signs related to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, these are people who have kind of plugged into an idea around the value of keeping people safe, or especially black people. And um, they're using their voice to protect that group. That's protection. And that's what community does for people. That's how we use community. Just to recap on those three points, the three functions of the community is reflection, it's like an outlet you plug into. You see yourself in the community, you decide that this is where I want to be, and you plug in. The connection is the bridge, um, your relationship in the community, and your ability to share information and resources that hopefully can lead to opportunities for you. And also how that community can help you interact with a larger society. That's the connection, that's the bridge. Protection is armor. It's a, a feeling of safety and belonging related to your community. And it's also that community 
ability to use their voice or use their cells to ensure the safety of its members. So those are the three functions of the community that I found. Now what can you do? Actually, this is what you need to do. Each of us needs to keep in mind our role in advancing a healthy, strong community. There's some uh, things that, that are kind of high level for me. The first thing I say is we need to act social. And I mentioned that community is a social construct. And that means that it's uh, cultural. That means that um, people and all of their nuances play an important role in the development of you. But as a development professional, and as people, even outside of the profession, as people who have a heart for the progress of our community, we have to act with the understanding that communities are a social and cultural entity. What does that mean? Um, the interconnectedness is the, is the currency of the community. So how do, I, how do I connect? Where is my fit? You know, even if it's outside of myself, I just have to have an understanding that you know, we're all interconnected and um, this group has a certain set of things that are important, a certain glue that holds it together, uh, a certain set of norms and values that, that hopefully will help it advance. Those social aspects need to be in my mind. When I have that understanding, I need to act on it. I need to respect those differences. I need to appreciate it. And I need to you know, approach people open-mindedly. Which opposed to the second part. We need to be inclusive to advance healthy communities. Um, community should never be exclusive. And it should never be uh, you know, insular. And that's, I think that's the damage that can uh, crop up when you, when you have a, you know, convergent ideas. When you get you think about protection, and you all kind of share the same idea, that can easily take a wrong turn when you decide that your ideas are superior or supreme. I think that's kind of what's happening uh, down in Phoenix. You have that group of uh, free speech activists deciding that they want to protest a mosque, you know, protest a faith, people who are just practicing their religion. I think that's a, a convergent idea that became kind of like an echo chamber. So the only voice they hear, they hear is, is their own. You know, and everything that we say to each other is right. So that means the outside needs to be addressed. That's not inclusive at all. That's, that's dangerous. And that's the wrong way to use community uh, to, to develop. The third piece is don't waste the privilege. And um, I think, you know, we all need to just acknowledge that we have a privilege, whether that be post-secondary education, whether that be uh, you know, a job, uh, whether that be our race or gender, we need to acknowledge that privilege. But then, going back to the active social, we need to use it to be a bridge for people as best we can. You never impose yourself, you never dictate, but you always uh, try to make yourself available to be that bridge for communities so that we all can kind of come up together. Um, of course, there's a lot more layers to these things, but you know, there's high level pieces I think are very valuable in um, using community to grow. Um, 